Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, checking in on this end of the weekend, Sunday night, August 2nd, 2020, about 8.51 p.m. West Coast time here. And taking a look at the Earthquake 3D globe here shows a lot of earthquake activity in the red color rings indicating older earthquake activity. So most of this out here along the western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire about ready to expire from that 24-hour uh, threshold there. So... Um, not a whole lot to replace that older activity. There is a little deeper earthquake activity here um, near the Fiji Islands region. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I can get that in there. That 4.5 right there in the red color flag indicating a deep earthquake. 578 kilometers below the surface there. Pretty deep. But Fiji Islands is definitely no stranger to uh, some deep earthquake activity out there. We see that much much often uh, than we do anywhere else it's the areas here to the west and to the northwest uh, that we need to pay attention to uh, when those deep earthquakes happen that's when we tend to see some major adjustment else elsewhere at the surface but uh, this minor activity um, here in fiji is just kind of like a uh, it's kind of like a starting point if you will for deep earthquakes um, out here along the west coast, the most recent quake there in the green flag out there. 2.5 earthquake out there in the... Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here real quick. It looks like California and Nevada region. We'll go ahead and switch over to the alternative view here. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Latest earthquake from the Caltech website here. Uh, shows the... Uh, uh, it looks like that red square right there, a little small red square. 2.5 earthquake there near Portola, kind of kind of up here in Northern California where I'm at. Um, we got, of course, Lassen Peak way up here, Mount Lassen, right? This is a ways away from Mount, uh, Mount Lassen. This is purely tectonic plate um, earthquakes in action there, if you will. So no volcanic activity um, associated with that at all. I do want to zoom in here a little bit closer on a different scale. You guys can see what I'm talking about here. Once again, red circle showing that 2.5. They have this here on the USGS near White Hawk. Never heard of that, White Hawk. White Hawk. Uh, they do have it at negative one kilometer, so it's kind of interesting there. Mount Lassen, like I said, is way way up here above above this region here so and we're talking about above chester above lake almanor this here is mount lassen um national park up here so no activity up there to to uh report we can even show the all magnitudes here and uh well there's a little one just a tiny one little point three earthquake point zero point three showing up outside of the um, region there but uh, no swarming no worry at all out there in, in uh, Northern California when it comes to volcanic activity the region down here to the south and west obviously this is the geysers area this activity here is very typical and this is actually below average when it comes to uh, earthquake activity out there a lot of hot springs being recorded out there for for a long long time folks this this activity here is, uh, like I said, if we don't see activity here, then something's going on. To see 50 or 60 or maybe even 100 earthquakes a day is very, very typical here in the region of Northern California here with this hot springs um, activity. So even, I mean, we even see like 3.5s and 4.5s on occasion um, showing up here southwest of Clear Lake, California near the geysers hot spring so very normal activity there showing up in northern california don't let any, anyone tell you otherwise um, a little bit of activity picking up here in northern or southern nevada i should say not anything major but we're just still seeing some aftershock sequence following you know large quakes that struck there uh, well a few months ago now a couple months ago this is the area where i took a trip down to uh, thanks to the donations and whatnot that everyone supported here on the channel. I a man should take a trip down there and investigate the area. I've seen a couple ghost towns, no uh, no fractures and whatnot, uh, no, no surface features that I could tell 
far as any damage goes. There was some minor road crackage or, or breakage, if you will, along Highway 3 within this vicinity. But when I got down there, it was pretty well patched up. So, um, But this activity, current activity, just pretty much typical. Some microquakes, but still obviously showing the uh, increased pressure out here in the region. Same with the Ridgecrest area. Obviously, it's been well over a year now since some large earthquakes struck out there. This is all still kind of cracking together, you know, kind of still kind of squeezing together. Obviously, it's a sign of a bigger picture on the west coast out here. You know, if you imagine this Pacific plate off here to the west and the North American plate intertwining with each other, um, you're going to see obviously increased aftershock activity in areas where there's already been a rupture in the surface there. And that's that's what we've been seeing for quite some time, folks. And uh, it's just a matter of time before uh, we see uh, well, some major release down here in the south. We just we haven't seen that in quite a long time here. Looking at the southern part of the San Andreas Fault System, shows some microquakes out here near the Salton Sea region, the south part. Also a little bit of swarming. I'm going to call this just a little bit of swarming out here near Brawley, California. Um, some microquakes and some even lower lower uh, two magnitude earthquakes there, showing up within the region there. This is kind of like an interception interception of the Imper Imperial Fault System and the Brawley Seismic Zone, which is an extension of, you guessed it, the San Andreas Fault Zone, the major plate boundaries out here. Together, these guys relieve the major plate stresses within the region of the North American and the Pacific Plate there. So it's a very interesting area to watch. And of course, this area along the southern, southern part of the San Andreas Fault System, an area to monitor closely because it's well long overdue for a major quake, no doubt. That's a fact. Not predicting anything, but that's just a that's a fact. St statistical fact. Um, let's see, Yellowstone National Park, pretty quiet up here. Idaho even, pretty quiet. A little earthquake up here in Washington. Looks like, uh, let's go ahead and zoom in and see what we got there. A little two-pointer. Well southeast of Washington, or of uh, Seattle, I should say. Go ahead and zoom in here and see what we got. Uh, Rattlesnake Mountains. This is all tectonic mountains built up, like I said, over time. Um, so purely uh, plate tectonic earthquakes uh, being in forests out there with that two-pointer. No volcanic activity. Yeah, some minor activity. If you want to look on the map near Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens, we can even include, we'll go ahead and include the... Uh, uh, all day magnitudes here. Hold on one second here. Actually, we, we are on that. We are already on the all magnitudes there. So that's it, folks. There's not a whole lot. You know, so no no fear mongering out there in Mount St. Helens or Mount Rainier or Mount Hood or Mount Shasta for that matter. Uh, Mount St. Helens there showing just a little 0 0.2 magnitude quake at 0.4 kilometers. I believe this is plate tectonics here. Uh, being played out there within the region. No volcanic or magma movement uh, to worry about in the region. So, Anyway, folks, um, let's see what we got going on here. Just a real quick check of uh, Tropical Storm Isaias. I hope, I hope that's the last time I ever have to say that. Um, we are looking at a pretty wimpy storm when it comes to uh, tropical hurricanes there. Current status, real quick. Maximum sustained winds of 60 miles per hour with gusts up to 75. So a little breeze out there moving north northwest at 8 miles per hour. Eventually this thing is going to continue to peter out and head towards the north and northeast before, uh, you know, it's obviously going to bring some rain and, and some wind out there. But uh, this thing never made it to Category 1 status like the, uh, the uh, National Hurricane Center predicted which is a good thing for the folks out there. And it stayed well off to the coast there. So very minimal damage, very minimal weather concerns when it comes to the uh, tropical disturbance there off of uh, Florida. Uh, once it moves up, maybe North Carolina, South Carolina, and the East Coast may see some uh, increased rainfall, but pretty much not even worth mentioning, folks. The system pretty much petered out and uh, said its goodbye and uh, 
it left the building pretty early. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Anyway, um, have a good night, folks. We are looking to monitor. Like I said, we are looking to uh, monitor a potential hurricane um, that could hit the United States. And what I want to do is make that trip out there and record and document a, uh, a strong hurricane. And I will position myself and videotape and monitor and collect data uh, within the eye wall if I can and live stream within the eye wall if I can um, coming up here real soon. As soon as that potential comes up, I am on that. The very next hurricane that hits the United States, whether it's a Gulf Coast or East Coast, category one, two, three, four, or five, I'm going to be out there, folks. So. Um, we are looking to accept any type of donations that you guys want to help out with whether it's two dollars one dollar three dollars ten twenty It doesn't matter folks anything that anyone wants to help donate here to the channel This goes directly back into the channel uh, for live streaming with the hurricane that's coming up um, And that's that's that it's gonna happen. I have no doubt in my mind um, that I'm gonna be experiencing a major hurricane uh, this season here It's just it's a matter of when not if so if You want to help out folks? I appreciate anything that anyone wants to help out We like I say we normally don't ask for donations, but it does tremendously help out It helps out the viewership. It helps out the quality that I provide here to the channel Like I say we're streaming in 4k. We're recording in 4k um, all of this was possible from obviously the ads um, generated from the channel and also the past donations that viewers help donate um, to each video out here so if you can folks hit that live chat super chat donation video it's pretty simple all you gotta do is hit super chat click the uh, donation amount and a message if you want and uh, like I said we will appreciate it I think all the viewers will appreciate it and uh, that's uh, that's happening it is happening really soon folks no doubt I don't wish destruction or anything out there from from major hurricanes but this is something I do um, I do professional weather chasing it's not a uh, not a little hey look there's a tornado let's go see what's going on no I I do it for a living this is what I do professionally so a hurricane um, you know it's a little different story but it's along the lines I know the weather dynamics I know the weather potentials and the hazards so it's not something anyone would want to do at random let's just say you know leave it definitely to the professionals and uh, that's kind of what I'm looking to provide for a lot of folks out there um, soon as that next hurricane hits the uh, the United States area so have a good night folks we're gonna jump off here um, this video went on a little bit longer than I planned but it's all good have a good night stay safe and we'll chat you guys another time